right. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another uh, interview. This time it's with Jacob Bernard Docker, one of our sense prospects here for the Ottawa Senators, uh, plays for the University of North Dakota this year, having a pretty good year. So I just want to welcome you to the show. And um, how's everything going with you? Yeah, thanks for having me. It's uh, it's good. We've got uh, had an off weekend last weekend, but we're we're back at it here. So it's uh, it's been nice to be playing some games. Oh, for sure. I, I mean, it's obviously different this year, so um, I can't imagine what you have to go through. But uh, at least you're back on the ice, and it's been a, a thrill for us to watch you uh, play earlier on. I appreciate that. So, so uh, my my first question here is actually a bit about North Dakota. So um, I've had the absolute pleasure of uh, of driving through North Dakota before, actually driving to Banff, so um, pretty close to your hometown there, Camore. But um, I, I remember I remember North Dakota well because it was probably like hands down the most boring six hours of my life driving through uh, driving through the state. So I'm curious though, um, being in what's it like? I want to know what it's like to play in North Dakota where you're in like the top hockey program, if not one of the top uh, hockey programs in the United States, surrounded by like an incredible fan base in this unreal facility. I guess this year um, it's probably not quite the same, but you have had the experience of playing there before. Um, And like just the way that the community and like the the culture and, and everything is so rich. Like if you can kind of just explain like what it's like, like, having that school and having that city in that state that's just like so wide open like like how what what that experience is like for you yeah i mean i don't i don't have enough good things to say about uh und hockey in general and obviously we get a you know an unbelievable support from our fan base the fans here are you know crazy you know in a good way um they love us and um support us um through everything so oh yeah obviously this year is a little different i think uh, we're still allowed, I think it's 3,500 people in the building right now. So it's still uh, a lot better than going to a way barns where there's, you know, usually no one there. So, um, you know, they're, they're definitely a big part of our success lately. So, um, you know, super fortunate to, to be able to play in front of 12,000 crazy fans usually. Awesome. And and you grew up in Canmore, Alberta, right? Which is, you know, sort of well known for its skiing and it's a mountain town. So um, going to play hockey, probably one of the biggest states in biggest schools it's way different than what you've uh, what you have around town but I just want to ask why you chose hockey and not skiing for example where you know it's it, it's well known around your town yeah I actually I grew up doing a lot of skiing um, you know my family would always go out my, my brother and my dad were both snowboarders and then me and my sister and my mom were always did the, the skiing and um, it was actually my mom's decision when I was young to put me in hockey um i'm not exactly sure why and then uh you know my dad my dad kind of just went along with it and um you know i was pretty fortunate to have my dad kind of coach me um through some of the minor hockey ranks and i guess it kind of just took off from there awesome see it, it's cool you started in alberta and you're going to ottawa i started in ottawa i currently live in alberta oh no way <laughs> yeah i live in edmonton oh, so really? I, I i've i've enjoyed those mountains man the Iron Goat is my favorite restaurant. Uh, I actually haven't been there too much, but I've heard really good things. I'm, I, I mean, I was there probably, I mean, I don't know how long ago. It was, it was a long time ago, but um, definitely the, a super the best, nice building on the outside. Oh, yeah. The best bison ribs I've had in my life. Oh, really? my God. I, uh, uh, it's... <sighs> That uh, that Brazilian steakhouse slaps too. That place is just. I, I've gotten the meat sweats there a couple times for having that. <laughs> uh, Jacob, where where did you play minor hockey? Like, where did you have to go? It was was it Airdrie? Is that? I played Bantam and Airdrie. I mean, I grew up playing in Canmore until I think Pee Wee. I, I was uh, out in Cochrane, and then Bantam was Airdrie. Yeah. And then did you? So you would have played against like Kale McCarr, right? Like you would have grown up uh, like yeah. playing against them and just. I didn't play against him in uh, in Bantam because he was or Midget because he was two years older than me. But I, I played against him in junior my first my rookie year, and yeah, he's to this day by far the best player I've ever played against. <laughs> oh, yeah, because uh, um, so I'm gonna ask, why was it so important for you to commit another year to you know UND when when you clearly could have been playing in the AHL. I mean, nobody could have saw the pandemic coming, but at the time you committed to UND as opposed to, you know, just going straight to, you know, AHL or, or you know, coming to the NHL camp. Um, I know that UND kind of holds a, a near and dear place in your heart, but 
was there something specific that drove you to go back for another year? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, I think the two years that I've been here, I've, I've loved every second of it. And, um, you know, I guess kind of just with last year ending the way it did and kind of our, our group feeling pretty special about, you know, the team we had and um, just a disappointing end. I think a lot of guys wanted to come back and kind of prove that, um, you know, and try to take another run at it, I guess, basically. And um, for me coming back, I think um, it's just another year under my belt of development. And, um, you know, it's absolutely just going to, um, you know, put me that much closer to playing the NHL with Ottawa. So um, I think it was a good choice and, um, you know, having a lot of fun this year. Unreal, man. So I guess uh, getting drafted and mo moving on to to play to Ottawa next year is is going to be a childhood dream of yours. Um, that I'm it, it very likely will come true. Um, one childhood dream of many that has already come through come true to you is to represent Canada on the world stage and the World Juniors. Um, and on top of that, to win gold for the team. So um, I guess like. I'm I'm curious if you could take me through like what it was like or take us through what it was like to play in that tournament where I think a lot of players or most hockey players grow up dreaming about and and just having that experience of like you you watch it for so many years you watch these these uh these guys play and you look up to them and then just just know or like it being you and then what that feeling was like to to win a gold medal uh, for for your country. Yeah, I mean it was an incredible feeling. It's one of those things I still can't really explain. I think having my whole family there, um, you know, except for my brother, he was playing hockey at the time, but my sister, my mom and dad made it out. And, um, you know, those were the people that got me to that, that spot. So, you know, I can still remember looking up in the stands and seeing them when we won. It's just uh, really surreal. It was, uh, it was an awesome moment. So, um, you know, a lot of memories that I'll never forget. And um, I actually grew up playing with uh, like Ty Smith. I grew up playing with him in, in spring hockey. So, to kind of be on a team with him and um you know some other guys that you obviously play against and with growing up was uh it was unbelievable no kidding <laughs> um awesome. i think a lot of people just wish for that opportunity i mean um you know every every kid that ever plays hockey dreams of playing at, at the world juniors or you know even being drafted by an nhl team and speaking of i mean we i saw a video earlier this year of uh, your team's reaction. I think you were with all the other boys when uh, Jake uh, was selected fifth overall. You guys were all up in the stands and you guys all, all seem really excited. So I just want to ask, you know, how awesome is it knowing that three of your teammates right now are all joining the Senators with you? And uh, not to mention Johnny Tyconic as well from last year. And is there like a sacred bond between the, the NODAC Senators, as we call them? Yeah, I think for sure. I mean, we're all super good buddies and um, you know, have a good time together. I think, you know, looking forward to the future and, and what could possibly be is, is pretty exciting for sure. But, um, you know, playing with those guys is so much fun and um, they're all elite players. And I think away from the rink is, is they're such good people too. So it's, it makes it a lot of fun. And, um, you know, seeing San Diego fifth overall there, you know, in the Ralph with all the boys there, it, it was a pretty special, um, you know, moment for him. But I think for us too, just, um, you know, supporting him and, you know, we obviously all knew how good he was and, and um, you know, that he had the potential to go that high. So, um, you know, that was a pretty fun night. Do you um, do you get to watch Sens hockey? Like, it, uh, if you – I'm assuming you probably pay attention to some level. And obviously right now one of the biggest questions um, on the Ottawa Senators roster is the D. Uh, the D is having quite a bit of issues right now. Next year, are you hoping to, you know, just maybe get another year into the AHL and, and kind of see how that feels like? Are you hoping to try and make the team right out of camp and, and you know, put your skills to use uh, in Ottawa right away? Because I think at the end of the day, man, I, I can speak for most fans when we say we, we want to see you in that 2D jersey in Ottawa. But what do you think? Yeah, no, to answer the first part, I definitely followed them. I was actually just watching the, the Oilers Sens game right before I came on with you guys here. So, um, no, they're they're definitely making a lot of progress. and. Um, you know, I think as a, as a young prospect, um, I think my goal is, you know, the reason I came back is to get another year under my belt and to be more ready for that National Hockey League level. So, you know, that's absolutely the goal is to step in and um, try to contribute and, and make that team. But, um, you know, obviously a lot of hard work to be done. And um, so I think it's just, just focusing on, uh, you know, helping my team out at North Dakota right now and, and seeing where that takes me at the end of the season. I just want to ask, what are you weighing in at now? Do you know? Um, like 190. 190. 
So yeah. you're start, you're filling in, man. Like you're probably going to be by next season. You're probably what expecting to be about buck ninety five or something. Do you think? Yeah, I don't know if I really want to get that much heavier. That was. I, not, <laughs> I was about to say. I know your speed and skill, right? But <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, I know in the summer when I, I guess you're going through the training and you're lifting a lot of heavy weights. I was closer to one ninety five, but yeah, my in season weight is kind of one ninety, and I, I think it's at a point in where I, you know I'm done growing, and I think you realize how important speed is in the game right now. And, um, you know, I, I'm not sure if I really want to get that much heavier, to be honest with you. What's the, so, di- what's the diet looking like right now? Are you just pounding back, like, as much meat as you can? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we're, we're treated pretty well here. We get three meals a day at the rink. So um, definitely all super nutritious meals. And, um, no, but in terms of nutrition, the the only thing that I really like to junk out on sometimes is ice cream. So that that's uh, that could be the death of me. But do you have a game day meal? Uh, we we always do the same thing. So it's uh it's just like white pasta with uh red sauce and white sauce, and then there's sweet potatoes and then um, nice. a salad. Damn, that's, that's some nice. carbs. Love that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So obviously this year you didn't have the the rookie camp or the rookie tournament for the Sens. So um, h- how different was that for you? And do you think you know um, uh, you'll profit off of just being with your team more? And uh, maybe you know going going to the camp next year might be beneficial for you just having more time uh, at UND. Yeah, I mean I think that I definitely missed that camp this summer. That's always something you know I look forward to the first two years. Uh, being there was was super fun, and I think uh, you know the whole scouting scouting staff and um, the coaches and 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 everyone there does a really good job of making a a really educational learning experience. I think you go our both years I've been there, I came away um, you know kind of know knowing more where my game's at, and what I need to work on, and um, lots of super good uh, workout um, information as well. So um, yeah, not having that was what was a bit of a dagger, but but like you said, I think next year just coming in more prepared and. Um, you know, I've had lots of time to train over the whole quarantine, so um, should be ready. If I'm not wrong, I think the the Sens conditioning coach actually stayed in touch with a few of the rookies this year, right? Um, the prospects to sort of just have an idea of what they they the team wants to to see from you. So, um, I guess you know, is there anything that the team really wants you to focus on this year? Um, just just for your personal sake. Yeah, Rob Mulan usually, uh, you know, deals with the prospects. And I know over quarantine, he was he was doing some FaceTime workouts with us. And they were pretty tough some mornings, you know, get used to sleeping <laughs> in a bit. And he'd text me the night before and, you know, get an early wake up and a workout in with some of the guys. So it's pretty fun. But um, I think for me, it's just trying to get quicker. Um, I've always been, um, you know, I guess my strength has, um, you know, always been pretty sufficient. But I think for me, it's just trying to get quicker and, those explosive movements and so a lot of jumping plyometric stuff um in the gym but uh i think it'll come with time That's jacob fun. did you did you uh did you pull the gronk at all where you just did like the same workout with, like five different shirts and just recorded yourself separately and just send it into them <laughs> <laughs> well we were live so I, I couldn't quite pull that one off oh. <laughs> i think i think only uh only gronk can get away with that <laughs> sort of a guy um all right so Jacob, you've you've you're young, but you've already built yourself um, a reputation as being a leader. Um, I, I think like a lot of a lot of people, a lot of Sens fans who are watching you um, coming up, it, it just seems like um, you you just have that personality, or you, you have that thing about your game that um, a lot of people look up to. Um, I, I think like it was pretty evident on how you relied on the World Junior Tournament. You were trusting a lot of big moments. You played a really sound defensive game, which was. Awesome to see. I was a big fan of it. Um, but another big thing that comes with that um, leadership is is um, using your voice. And this year to start the season, um, you used your voice to kneel with um, your teammate Jasper um, during the national anthem. And I uh, I was hoping that you might be able to take our listeners through that and just what, what that meant to you and how important that was um, in, in such a time um where there's so much going on and and you have that voice you have that ability to be able to express yourself and i'm just curious like like um what that meant for you and if you uh like feel that that it's important for for athletes to to voice or to use their voice or their platform yeah i mean at the start of this or before the season started um 
my assistant coach came up to me and, and asked me if I wanted to be a part of the uh, inclusive and divergent group at UND. And I said, absolutely. And I was kind of walking into something I really honestly knew nothing about. Um, and I guess that's kind of when all the, the stuff was going down on social media with, you know, the whole George Floyd thing and, and all that. Um, and I think just being part of that group, you know, I guess really opened my eyes to, to what's happening in the world. And um, as a white male in hockey, obviously I haven't had to deal with um, any discrimination my, my whole life. And I think being a part of that group just kind of really made me realize how lucky I was. And you know, I think sometimes you walk around um, not really not realizing what other people are going through. And I think for me, at the start of the season, it was an opportunity to um, speak out um, about something non-hockey related, which I've never done before. So um, I definitely uh, don't don't regret what I did. And I think, uh, you know, me and Jasper um, tried to educate ourselves as much as we could. And I think um, for the people out there, like we were, we were trying to send a message and, and, and didn't want people to focus on the action itself of actually kneeling, but more so the message of, uh, hey, this world needs to needs to get better. We need to treat people with more respect. And, um, you know, that was kind of the basis of it. Got yeah, goosebumps, so, man. <laughs> yeah, like that's that's really cool. Like we, um, with it being Black History Month, uh, we're going to have a Kill Thomas on our show at some point this month. We're just working out the details. But we think it's really important, man, that not just – not just like hockey community, but sports in general. I mean, in hockey, it's a little, it's a little more um, emphasized on because there's not as many black hockey players, but like, it just needs to be a better place for black athletes to be like, Hey, you know what? Maybe I want to try hockey. Cause we've had some of the best players that were, were black hockey players. Right. And it's just, you know, it's just, I love seeing guys like you kind of use your position to take that knee. And I'm, I'm assuming you probably got a bunch of flock about it. Uh, through social media, uh, you know, by some people, but by the rest of us, we look at it, we go like, hey, man, like that takes, that takes excuse my language, that takes balls, you know, for this young kid who hasn't established a career in the NHL yet to already take this massive um, social uh, issue that's happening in the world and stand up for it. You know, like most guys are too afraid to do that when they haven't established themselves as an NHLer yet. They're, they're scared to take that, you know, that position, but you kind of just grabbed it by the balls and you said, you know what, I'm going to stand up and that is what it is, man. So kudos to you. Uh, just all more respect from, from me and uh, sense fans, honestly. I really appreciate that. Yeah. It was, it was definitely not an easy thing to do, but I think, you know, like you said, there's some people that didn't agree with it and um, you know, that is what it is that they were, you know, raised a certain way or, or whatever it was. But um, you know, when I had some black athletes reach out to me on social media and you know, I had a ton of positive, stuff as well um along with people who disagree but i think when when a few black athletes reached out to me and kind of just said that it made them feel more comfortable in the dressing room with um kind of where hockey culture is at right now and and how it's not very inclusive i think you know that kind of made it all worth it to me and um just to try and make people um feel more included uh i love that and i think it takes a lot of you know leadership obviously to to sort of just stand up and and use your voice like like brennan said but um, so you're wearing the A this year, and I, I know that's always special for players. Um, how does that feel for you? And I guess I just wanted to touch on Jordan Kawaguchi as well, because he, he I don't think he, he's got picked up by an NHL team yet. So as a teammate, how would you sell your captain to an NHL team? Yeah, I mean, he's a guy I look up to, to um, you know, for everything that I'm doing in the locker room. Um, everything on the ice, he's, he's such a professional from top to bottom and um, such a good guy off the ice too. Super, uh, super friendly guy and, um, you know, easy going off the ice. But I think when he gets on, it's just that laser focus of, hey, how do, how do we win this game? Um, and he's just such a team player that way. So he's, he's really helped me out for sure. And um, yeah, wearing the A has been an absolute honor. I think there's so many guys in that room that, that could be wearing that instead of me. But, um, you know, for my teammates and coaches to kind of, um, you know, allow me that opportunity has been super special and, um, you know, something I definitely don't take for granted. So, Jacob, sorry, I just got a, just a question here. What does the logistics look like for you guys right now for playing? Like, because you're you're full time in school and then you have to do this bubble situation. Like how like what, what kind of gong show are we looking at? Like what is what does your weeks look like? Yeah, so we had that bubble in Omaha, the first 10 games. We had 10 games in 19 days, which was pretty crazy because it was right in the middle of our finals, which was tough. So, you know, we actually had a few days where guys had to, like, basically practice for 15, 20 minutes and get off the ice and run to a final. So 
it was a little hectic, <laughs> but uh, I think the league did a really good job of, of um, and every team of really just adapting to the circumstances and um, getting those games in. So that was definitely a unique experience. And, you know, I think the guys had a lot of fun, um, you know, bonding there for 19 days in the same hotel. And, yeah, you know, obviously things start to get maybe a little bit old, but I think uh, you definitely appreciate what the NHL guys went through after, after that. So um, it's been a cool experience. And I, I think we're doing another mini bubble here for playoffs. Um, so I think it's actually going to be in Grand Forks, so that'll that'll be exciting. Oh, sick! Awesome. Nice. All right, so um, before we let you go, I think this is a question a lot of Sense fans are, are, are curious to hear from you. Um, but uh, just as a leader in the locker room, what can you tell us of Shane Pinto, Jake Sanderson, and uh, Tyler Clevin's game? You know that has impressed you so far, and um, how how mature have they been mm-hmm. since joining the program? And and uh, what kind of teammates are they? Yeah, I think obviously Pinner's taken off this year. If you guys have kind of followed along with him, he's uh, mm-hmm. he's been tremendous for us, scoring a lot. Um, I think he's doing a lot of good things on the defensive side of the puck too. He's an absolute monster in the in the faceoff circle. I think one ninety one eighteen for eighteen or something like that. Yeah. Which is, <laughs> absolutely is that really good? Ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> so he's he's had a you know an awesome awesome year for us so far, and um, great guy in the room. So. Um, and then Sandy, he, uh, I mean, his skating, I think kind of speaks for itself. It's, it's honestly unlike anything I've ever seen. Like, and you ask any of the guys on our team, like it, it doesn't really look like he's skating that hard. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden he's flying by you. So, um, <laughs> he skates so well, but I think, you know, usually fast, I feel like a lot of fast players these days maybe don't use their hockey sense because they've never had to, cause they're so fast and. For him, it's definitely not that way. He's such a smart player, so good with the puck. And, um, you know, I think one one thing I realize about him is, like, how good he is at making little middle pot plays in the defensive zone. Um, so that's definitely something I've, I know I've tried to pick off of him. And then Clevy, I think, you know, when he came in the summer, um, I definitely did not expect him to be as fast as he was either, being that big. And, um, you know, and in, in, in all summer, all the guys are, are saying, you know, they heard that he's a big hitter and, I was, you know, everyone's kind of just waiting for it to happen. And first game, he lays like two huge hits in the first period. So he's a guy that definitely opens up a lot of space for um, other guys on the team. And he's got an absolute bomb of a shot from the point, too. So, yeah, um, the world juniors, the world juniors, too, you watch them on the ice and you turn on, you look at the TV and you see a big hit and you're like, oh, yeah, that was definitely clever. Yep. Yep. Definitely. Yeah. Man, he's no, got some hands on him, too. Like, I don't, <laughs> I don't think people realize the skill level he's got. Yeah, I was a little surprised. Those guys have been uh, a ton of fun to play with, and all super good guys off the ice too. So awesome! And um, so I, I think I've heard a nickname earlier from you mentioning. I think you said Sandy. Is is there any nicknames that are going on that Sense fans could could really you know get an inside scoop to sort of call these guys uh, just just to have it in advance? Um, I, obviously Sandy's a good good one, but uh, is there like a Bean? Uh, nickname for Pinto because we'll, yeah. we'll get it. We'll get it trending on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, a lot of guys call him Beans. A lot of guys either call him Beans or Pinner, and then uh, call uh, Club and Clevy. So pretty standard, awesome. I guess. Kind of just adding the Y on the end, but <laughs> <laughs> really thought it's out of the box for that one. Yeah. Well, so Jake, what do they call you? What do you, what do they call you? Uh, most guys call me JVD. I, that's kind of something just, that's just, kind of stuck yeah. since I've been in North Dakota, actually. In juniors, everyone called me Doc for Docker, but mm. since I've been here, it's been JBD. So just uh, roll on with the punches. <laughs> <laughs> Want to know? Oh, awesome. So you you did uh, you did talk some great things about um, all your teammates or all, all the um, I guess Nodak Sens game before before we let you go real quick. Like, is there anything Sens fans should know about about some of these guys coming in? Like, does Pinto love playing like Barbie Girl before games, or like, is there any any crazy stuff that we should just have a heads up on so we we know what we're dealing with? Does Clevin hide pizza pockets in his pads <laughs> or something? <laughs> uh, yeah, if I've got any beef on Pinner, it's that he's not a very good pool player. Absolutely dominated <laughs> him in the bubble. So, <laughs> me and him probably played it combined, and I'm not even exaggerating. Probably over. 75 games of pool over in the bowl. <laughs> and uh we you know we had some betting going on and it got pretty competitive so um that's that's all i got on pinner if you got beef with jbd holler at nes on the pod
He's better in the face-off circle, at least. So that's all that matters. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, I just want to thank you again, Jacob, for, for joining us. Um, it was obviously uh, a thrill to talk to you. I mean, uh, we're all huge Sense fans, and we can't wait to see you on the ice with this team. And uh, obviously, good luck with the, the rest of the year. And, um, you know, Sense Twitter is always active, and I think we're always rooting for you. So I think I could speak for everyone uh, on that one. Yeah, thanks a lot for having me, guys. Really appreciate it. Cool. Anytime, man. Appreciate it. Okay, man.